Before, let me share my analysis of the test and my predictions for the Amy cutoffs, as well as some tips for the future. Okay, so starting off at the 10B, I think this was definitely a very difficult test. Like, especially you have problems like number six, definitely hard. You have number nine, but this one was really hard for a number nine. I think this could have been a last five problem, honestly. We have number 10 on the harder end. Number nine, like you really have to, there's like, there's smart substitutions you have to do, or a lot of cases. Number 10, you have to factor it out. You to, and you have to actually like factor these cubics and divide them. So definitely for a number 10, it's a tricky problem. Number 12, it's it's not that hard, I would say, but you have to do a lot of like, it's, it's a long problem. We have to do for three different shapes and you have to figure out what is the radius in each case and then divide it. This one was a nice geometry problem, but definitely like not the easiest, I would say. This one is just a partial fraction decomposition problem. I would say this one is relatively straightforward, but it's definitely not definitely not easy by any means. Number 16, this was a little bit of casework. I don't think this one's too bad. This one I don't think was too bad either. You have to like find the formula for the for the edit term and then just use it inequality. This one wasn't bad at all. This one was definitely definitely easy. This one was really easy for its position. This one was like you just used the volume ratios and then you get three cube minus two cubed over one cube, two cube minus one cubed. 20, you expand the radii. This was also wasn't too bad. 21, I think this one was definitely really tricky, noticing that cyclic observation for sure. 22 is very, fairly simple, stars and bars. 23, also I think not too bad. 24, just you write the state's equation. It's a pretty straightforward problem. And 25, I think not too bad either for 25. So overall, like the end problems were not that bad by any means. Like I would say 22 honors were not bad at all. But overall, like we have a lot of difficult problems early on, like number nine. This one, I'm sure wasted a lot of people's time on this one. So that's why it's like really important to always skip it, right? And then, you know, like number 11, take some time, number 12, maybe 13. So overall, this was definitely a hard test, but we also have to account for something that B effect. So the reason I say this is because roughly... 30,000 people take the 10A every year and 23,000 take the 10B. But those 23,000 are generally the people who are serious, who are doing both the A and the B. But the Amy cutoffs are based on a percentage of the people, not necessarily not necessarily a fixed number of people. So percentage-wise, as a result, making it from the B test is slightly harder. So the cutoffs get slightly inflated because of that B factor. So while I did this, think this was a harder test than the 10A, I predicted 90 for the, the 10A. I will... I think this one might be slightly higher because of the B effect. So I'll predict a 91.5 for the Amy cutoff for the 10B. Now onto the 12B. So 12B, this test I thought was a bit easier than the 12A, I think. Like this was relatively straightforward problems. Like the earlier problems were not too bad at all. Maybe nine and 10 were a little bit harder for their position. Number 12, 13, not too bad. 14, also not too bad. 15, really easy. That was the same one on the 10. 16 was fairly straightforward. You use the clock formula. 17 was tricky, noticing that cyclic observation for sure. 18, pretty straightforward. 19, not too bad, but this one was a little bit long. 20, really straightforward for number 20. 21 was really easy. 22 is also fairly easy, right? You just find the comp. I'll explain more in a solution video later. 23, you know, there, there's one observation and then it's kind of a simple calculation. 24, really just about graphing it out and then counting it. Also, not too bad. And then 25 has a really neat trick to it. So overall, the whole test as a whole, I think, was definitely slightly on the easier end. It was, I wouldn't call it easy, easy, but a little bit easier than A for sure. And then coupled with the B effect, the cutoffs are definitely going to be higher than the A, I think. So my prediction for the cutoff for the 12A is 87. Sorry, 12B is 87. I predicted a 82.5 for the A, especially because of that voiding. So yeah, 82.5 for the 12A, 87 for the 12B. That's my best guess based on hearing what other people have had to say about the test difficulty and my analysis of the test myself, what I thought about the difficulty of the problems. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be sharing a lot more solutions videos for many of the harder problems. And I hope you check them out. Bye.